Hey, hi, and hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for List Week. Yes, 2023 List Week. We are kicking it off. This week, going to get you my favorite EPs of the year, LPs, songs, worst albums, and worst songs, too. And per usual, I'm going to start things off with a list of honorable mentions. This was a pretty backloaded year, and I actually ended up giving uh, quite a few positive reviews than I normally do. And I thought in this video I would shout out records that didn't necessarily make the final albums of the year cut, along with a few others that while I didn't love them, uh, they were certainly interesting and uh, worth an extra little bump here because I, I thought they were highlights. We will link all the reviews I did for these albums down below so you can check them out for yourselves. And let's get it started with this new album from Jerome's Dream. That would be the gray in between. These guys are a pretty legendary emo and screamo. Uh, maybe emo violence band, you could say, with a super abrasive and chaotic sound. Uh, they had a comeback record drop not too long ago that I thought didn't quite um, hit or scratch that itch. But this new record from them over here is actually just uncompromisingly brutal, powerful, heavy, short, to the point, blunt, and when I say blunt, I mean blunt force. It is hellish, but simultaneously uh, very emotionally raw and angsty, emotionally tortured in the way that you expect uh, some of the greatest stuff in this genre to be. If you like your rock music to be deafening and anguished, this is the record for you, and most definitely give it a spin if you haven't. Uh, next, shout out to the new collab record from West Coast rapper Blue and and a producer, Real Bad Man, who came through with this a really short project over here, Bad News, which, yeah, was a bit scant, a little short of breath in a way, but the jazzy and sample-heavy production highlights all over this record are great, and lyrically at this point, I would say Blue is still very much on a creative streak, with verses that either dive into a lot of personal feelings or the greater ills of the world more broadly. But, yeah, it's just very killer, underground, West Coast hip-hop. You can't go wrong. Following this, want to point out uh, my enjoyment of the new Foo Fighters record, uh, but here we are. Really consistent, passionate, and emotional record from Dave Grohl and the boys. Really the best record the band has dropped in years. I did love it. I did review it positively, but there were just some other records that I ended up kind of, you know, preferring deeper into the year, which is why it's ending up on the honorable mentions video. Following this, a uh, shout out to the new Thanti Faxath record, Hive Mind Narcosis. This technical, chaotic, noisy, and progressive metal and black metal outfit uh, comes through with their first album in quite a while, and they are sounding just as dizzying and ferocious as they ever have. Maybe it's not quite as daring or as out there as I would have hoped, considering all the time it took to get this record out. If if you're an extreme metal fiend and you somehow missed this record, make sure to give it a spin. Next, wanted to shout out this uh, Witch Album Zango. These guys are an old school funk rock and acid rock band from Zambia whose older records in recent years have uh, kind of gained a bit of a cult following, which actually led the band to get back together and legit record some new material. And that is what this album is. And it sounds like they kind of went back to a lot of their old songwriting techniques, uh, even recording techniques. Uh, in such a way to where this record sounds like something that could have dropped in the 70s or so. It's a lot of catchy and fiery performances with tight, stellar, classic-sounding rock instrumentation melding uh, with those musical influences that could only come from the more southern regions of Africa. Deeper into the honorable mentions, we have the new Young Fathers record over here. The experimental pop, soul, and hip-hop trio is back with a new batch of songs that stylistically, uh, to be honest, are more difficult to define than ever. Some of the progressions and production on this record, in my opinion, were a little rough, but the freewheeling creativity, strong songwriting, and distinct vocals this record brings to the table uh, still made it a highlight of the uh, year for me. Next on the list, that is going to be the new record from Lil Yachty, Let's Start Here, which was one of the most talked about albums of the year, and for good reason, as Yachty, who is typically known as a rapper and an auto crooner, uh, makes a very successful transition into psychedelic 
rock and pop on this one. I mean, some moments are a little rough and come across maybe uh, a little, just a wee bit out of touch with the genres he's pulling from, but that's more the exception than the rule on this LP, as the vast majority of songs here are pretty great. Not to mention, Yachty didn't really need to switch up his vocal style too much for it to work over these uh, very lush, drippy instrumentals. It's an album that weirdly makes way more sense than it should, in a way. Moving on from here, we also have the Black Country New Road album Live at Bush Hall, the band transitioning into a new phase post the departure of their lead singer Isaac, taking some different approaches to songwriting and sharing vocal duties now uh, on this new batch of songs. I think it was really smart of the band to kind of, you know, present this new angle in a live album context. And frankly, there's a lot of great songs and performances on this album, which even if it is a little rough around the edges because of the fact that it is, you know, kind of happening in a live context, it does make me excited to hear where the band is going to be taking things next and certainly puts to rest any anxieties, uh, at least for me. And I, th I think a great deal of fans uh, who might have been thinking, well, you know, uh, uh, now that uh, uh, Isaac has left, like there's no way uh, they're still going to make uh, great music because there is, in fact, some really great music on this record. Next honorable mention will be the Boy Genius album, The Record. Awesome that Lucy and Julian and Phoebe were finally able to come through with this uh, highly anticipated project and that it came out as great and cohesive as it did. There are a few songs on here that I thought were kind of bland and production wise. I feel like uh, the three of them kind of settled on something sonically that was uh, more agreeable than exciting, but the songs are still most certainly there, and the creative chemistry between the three of them is absolutely undeniable. Plus, I saw them live at some point this year, and uh, the performance was absolutely killer. A few more left, uh, one of which is this new one from Tizo Touchdown, How Do You Sleep at Night? Even if this album didn't quite do the numbers I was hoping it would, I think Tizo has at least turned me into a believer, and shown in this batch of tracks that he is one of the most exciting, quirky, fun, interesting, and unique new artists out there. Though maybe too quirky for a fully mainstream appeal, or maybe it's a case of him being a little ahead of the curve, who knows. Either way, some of the most interesting genre blends that I've heard this year turned up on this record, as well as most entertaining songs. Even if the record isn't perfect, I'm still hearing boatloads of potential. Next in the list is going to be the new Swans album, The Beggar. Far from my favorite project in the band's recent string of albums, but Michael Gira and company still came through with a very powerful release here that brings at least a few very heavy and exciting builds of instrumentation and lyrics that see Michael pretty much facing his own mortality in a very poetic and highly impactful way. In fact, uh, might be some of the best lyricism on any Swans album ever. A few more mentions here, one of which is uh, the Matana Roberts record, Coin Coin, Chapter 5. Matana Roberts, if you're unfamiliar, is a fantastic band leader. Uh, multimedia artist, saxophone player, who obviously now is in the uh, fifth installment of this album series they call Coin Coin. And while this record wasn't one of my favorites in the series, musically speaking, it has proven to be one of my favorites narratively and conceptually, because I do think Matana really kind of ups uh, their storytelling game here, exploring these themes of personal freedom and societal discrimination through like these very fragmented uh, bits of narrative, which are cohesive yet confusing and disjointed uh, as they are supposed to like represent a certain type of erasure of history for certain types of people or uh, people having certain sorts of experiences, which tie into their systematic dehumanization. That's a uh, very verbose, that is a mouthful, I know, but it's still a, a very daring and interesting album that is worth checking out. And finally, I want to give a quick shout out to the new Andre 3000 album, New Blue Sun, which uh, if you guys caught my review, you know I'm like not in love with this record, but I do think it is uh, really interesting and honestly uh, very authentic and cool of Andre to have come back uh, into the music fold after all these years and just dare to do something different. Beat expectations and not feed into uh, the demands of people expecting that he just basically make a record that sounds like some old outcast project. I hope now that the uh, floodgates have been opened a little bit here that uh, Andre will continue to create and even that he'll dig further into what he was attempting to do here. Because while not perfect, I do think what he is attempting uh, in terms of new age music and improvisational music uh, on the 
this record. Uh, there's a lot of potential in it. Plus, it was kind of cool to uh, be able to engage in genres and styles. They don't often get the opportunity to because uh, uh, there's not usually that much demand for them, which comes uh, <laughs> with, of course, uh, somebody as big as Andre putting out an album like this. I think that is going to be it for the honorable mentions in this video. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, again, List Week 2023, uh, the rest of the videos are coming. Just hang tight. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, honorable mentions uh, forever.